Good morning. This is Charlene from Sound Sewing, Silverdale, Washington, and also from the Foff Creative Sewing Center, Lacey, Washington. I'm here today to show you a little bit about our Premiere Plus 2 software. So this is just a getting get to know a few th tricks and things you could do in it. As I'm in here, I am going to move my cursor around and I will pulse it every once in a while so you can see where it's located at. So right now we are in the Home tab, which is where it first opens up, and this allows us to do groupings of our designs right here. It will allow us to actually rotate it by 45 degree in increments or modify the design by uh, settings. You have a lot you could do in the Home tab. What I want to do is I want to play with what is built into the software. So I'm going to come up here to what's called the Super Design. And there are hundreds of designs in here on the Super Designs. So I can see them all. <clears throat> I am going to do a down arrow right here. And I'm going to switch it to All for my menu to change over to show all my designs. It'll just take my computer a second here. All right, so now we open up the menu so I can see all the Super Designs that are available in this part of the software. As I scroll down, you'll see what I mean by literally hundreds of them available to you right here in this part of the software, from buttonholes to faces, redworks, appliques, corners, even uh, specialty needle techniques, for instance, uh, your felting needles, twin needles, all sorts of things that are available for you here. You can even use your wing needles, a lot of different things. <clears throat> it, as you open yours and you scroll through, if you find things that are grayed out, that means that you are not running the full part of the software. So anything that's in color, I can or you can use. All of mine are available because I am running the Premiere Plus 2 Ultra. To activate any of them that are not available in your design, in your super designs, you would just uh, activate them through upgrading the software, which you could do by calling us and we can sell you the product codes to be able to do that. So what I do is just play with the kitty cat up here. <clears throat> I love playing with this kitty cat. We could go ahead and we could change his size as a whole percentage. We could change just his width, just his height. But for today's purposes, I'm just going to leave him at default. And I'm going to click Apply so that I get him right on our screen. So here he is. Very detailed, very pretty. He's really cute. So let's say that um, I wanted to have him, but maybe I want his colors to be changed. Maybe I like him to be sepia. There is more options right here if I open up my Style Select. In my Style Select, there we go, I have Color, which is Default, Sepia, or Line. Now, not all of our uh, Super Designs in this area have these controls. It, you just have to pick a menu and open up your style and see if they are available. Well, in this little guy, he is available in Sepia, so you can see him better. I'll apply him. And there he is. Then I can also come in here and I can say I would like to see him in line work. Now he's more quilted, more red work. And I can apply him and still the same cat, but he comes in a little bit smaller because of the style I have selected. Now I could change his size and that can be done very simply. I can actually come right up here to the top here. I knew my other one was 101 millimeters. Uh, so I could, <clears throat> excuse me, change him to 101 millimeters and apply him, and there he is at his full size. If I want to, I can hover my mouse right here, and I can see that this gives me a little bit more information. The 101 is 3.98 inches, and it tells me I go from five millimeters as high as 200 millimeters on this particular super design. You can go outside that, but it might uh, play with the intricate uh, stitching, it could uh, make it less detailed, but these are the guidelines they're telling you that it would like to stay in. So now let's say I brought him up here, but I really decided that I want this littler kitty cat to be more like the original. I do not have to delete him and start over. All I need to do is just right click on him and then I can come up here to style and you will see that I have all the three combinations I had before. And if I pick color, He's going to come up, stay his same size that I had originally placed him, but now he is color exactly like the first one I brought in. Kind of cool about the super designs that you can do that. They just means that they, um, they're super. You can do things really quickly with them, and super designs are mostly built into the machine. Later on, we could probably do a video about how you can make your own super designs, but right now all your super designs are the ones built in unless you've made some.
So I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to just really quickly delete some of these guys. Um, and then I'm going to just select the smaller one here and go back into my home page right here. So now that I have a design actually available, you will see I have more things up here on my home screen ribbon bar that are active. If you bring up a design and you find that they're not active, all you simply have to do is make sure that you have an active box around the design you want to play with. So for instance, if I click off, he is no longer active, and therefore some of my options are grayed out because I have nothing selected. So by selecting him, I get some new options up here that I did not have before. So I was telling you earlier that you can simply just change his size. If I was to put my mouse on the corner here, I could change him by dragging him. There's a couple different ways you can do that. By just putting my mouse there, I can left click and I can just, as you can see, I can change him any way I want and he will recalculate for me because he's a super design. So his underlays are recalculating, his stitch lengths, all of that because his handles are green. That's how I know he's super. But by changing him that way, I don't always know exactly how I am changing him. So if I undo, he's going to go back to normal, and I'm sorry, I did that kind of fast. My undo is right up here on the top left in these teeny tiny little icons. If I wanted him to stay right where he's at, but I wanted him to grow from the center out, I would have to hold down my control and shift key as I stay on my corner, my cursor right here in the corner. I hold my control and shift key on my keyboard, and now I can left click on that handle and see how he moves in and out from the center. So my center is going to stay right where I had him. Sometimes that is important. You put a design where you want and then you go to resize him. If you didn't hold the control shift key, he won't stay proportionate and he won't move. He won't resize from the center out. Let's say I don't care about him resizing from the center out, but I do want him to stay proportionate. I could just, with my cursor right on any of the four corners, doesn't matter which corner you do, as long as it's on one of the four corners, I could hold down my control key, and now he'll stay proportionate, but he will. his opposite corner from the corner I'm pulling is the one that will stay anchored as you enlarge it. So if you just want to do him proportionate and you don't care about how he's going out, you could just use the control, or if you can want to keep him proportionate but want him to work from the center out is control shift. The next thing we can do is let's say I don't know how big I want him exactly by dragging him out, but I know I want him 10% bigger. I could come up here to the modified design icon. So go ahead and open up that icon, and right here it's telling me he is 68 millimeters. I have been playing with him, so you can see that I've actually made him 61% bigger, both in width and height, because I was using my proportional uh, keys on my keyboard. So let's say I decided that I want him actually to be only 30% bigger from what he originally was. So that'd be 130 by 130. And then I'd say, okay, and now he'll go to the 30% bigger from his original state that I brought him in from. The next thing you could do is let's say you actually wanted him to be 30% smaller than his original state. So original state was the 100%. So you would take 30 off of the 100%, so that means I would want him to be 70. So if I change him to 70, that will make him 30% smaller than he originally was. And now he's getting kind of tiny, but he's still really cute. Now that I've done that, let's say I wanted to uh, put him in a circle going around some item in my, my hoop. So I can do that by going into what's called the Encore key. I love the Encore system. The Encore is a program built right into your Premiere Plus software, and it allows you to come in here and decide if you want to do shapes, if you want to do hoop, you want to do line, whatever you want to do. I'm going to go ahead and do a circle. I am going to make sure that he stays standard. I don't want him to mirror. Mirroring would be this option here, and that means basically every other cat will be facing each other. I, I think that'll look weird, so I don't want to do that. As I come across, I have things grayed out because of how I picked the circle. And right here I have repeats. By default, it will come up at six repeats. I can change this uh, to as many repeats I want, up to 360. You can see that as I put my mouse there. 360 repeats of cats, that would be a lot of cats. But let's say that I would like this to be a seven. So I'm just going to increase it to seven because I like odd numbers. 
I do want them temporarily grouped. That means uh, they will become grouped with orange handles. So as I play, I can play with them as a whole and move them as a whole instead of individual designs. The other thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to do preview and it's going to come up. There are my cats and I can then bring this out or down so I can um, do what I want with him. You can also now you have this little symbol over here on the side so I can actually make ovals now. So I can bring him in, make him an oval, drag him up and now I have an oval of cats. I know it looks kind of hokey, but that's OK. You can still do that. Once I have what I want, I could just press apply. And then here they come up with the orange handles I talked about, which is telling you that it is grouped right now because they're orange solid handles. And I can see little boxes inside around each one of them. So they are still independent. That basically tell me this hasn't been color sorted, anything. Um, so right now it would come up with 112 color changes and I know that by looking over here. However, when I go and prepare it for stitching out, I would not do that. I would color sort it so I don't have all those different color changes. The next thing I could do is I can go into my letter tab right here. Your letters that are built to in are also considered super designs. And if I open this up right here, you have over 150 in the full program of fonts or letters that are available to you in here. I'm just going to pick one to play with, a kind of curly Q one, and I'm going to come up here and write cats. So I typed it right here in my letter. So this letter that I have selected right here comes up with a, a 20 to 30 millimeters in size. So that basically is the size recommendation they recommend. I can go outside it, but it can alter the quality of the stitching. But I have done it. I haven't got really crazy doing it, but I have gone outside the parameters and been just fine, but just know that it may not stitch as well as it would if you stayed in the parameters. By default, your size is always going to come up to the smallest size available in the software. You could change it any ways that you want. Uh, then it comes in, I could change my gap. I could change just my width and my height of each one of these uh, letters. I also have my shape. I could shape these and put these in any kind of setting I want. Today, I'm just keeping it basic. I'm going to keep it to the original shape. Again, if you don't see all those shapes when I open that up, that just means you're not running the full program at this time. And we can help you if you like to do that. When I do lettering, I do not like to cut between each of my stitches. I like to have a running stitch between each of my stitches. It makes it look just nicer on the back. And then I'm going to click apply. And here it is, the word cats. It came in down below the design because my design was selected. If I had not had my cats already selected, it would have came directly in the middle of the hoop. So to see this better, I'm going to come right down here to my zoom icon right down here, the zoom to rectangle. And I'm going to select it and would come in and I am going to just draw a box around it and zoom right in so I can see it better. So proportionately, he probably isn't as big as he should be as to the other cats that are in there. So what I'm going to do is I am going to right click on him and then I am going to come up here to properties. And when I open up the properties, I think I did it. My computer, I think is thinking it is. Okay, so when I open up the properties, basically this ribbon bar that I have back here behind my software has just opened up for the word I have selected. So I'm saying that I probably want this to be more like the 30 millimeters that it was um, on the high side of 20 to 30 millimeters for my font. So I could just change that there. And because I changed it there, then it changes it to this word cats right here. If I had came up here and changed it to 30 right here and came all the way across to over here and clicked apply, it wouldn't change the original cats. It would have given me a secondary cats right here. So anytime you want to change what's actually on your screen, you would actually, uh, you would actually just right click on it. Okay. So this actually is all I'm going to show you right now. We will do another whole video about exporting and getting it prepared for your embroidery machine and what the difference is between savings between a VP4, VP3, all of that good stuff. And we have a lot of other videos 
for the software, including one whole video just on the fonts or letter tab alone. Thank you and have fun. Please keep sending us uh, emails on video suggestions. We are marking them all down. We will eventually get to all of them as soon as we can. And thank you for coming and playing with us today.